This is my old setup, an M2 MacBook Air, an ultrawide 4K monitor, a mechanical keyboard and a gaming mouse. And this is my new setup. A 21 inch iMac from 2011 with a 1080p screen, a 20 year old membrane keyboard and a magic mouse. So why did I downgrade? Well, it was after seeing my history professor's office. Let me explain. When I designed this setup, I wanted it to be as efficient as possible. I'm a graduate student, so most of my work is writing papers and editing Word documents. I most often have three windows open. A Chrome tab on my left to look up words and terms or look for literature. In the middle is my main writing document. And on the left, a PDF viewer. But it didn't work. Too often I got distracted, sometimes reading when I should be writing or vice versa, or even worse, falling into YouTube rabbit holes, answering messages and emails, even browsing Facebook, and sometimes booting up Hearthstone, because they were only a few clicks away. So back to my professor's office. I was struck to see his setup. A small monitor hooked up to a Lenovo laptop, and a wired keyboard and mouse that might predate me. Still, he's written articles and entire books in here, without an ultrawide monitor and a mechanical keyboard. And that's when it struck me. We shouldn't strive for multitasking and efficiency. We should strive for focus, singular. So, how did I go about it? Well, I established some guidelines. 1. Simplicity and affordability. The setup must be simple, with as few elements as possible. And it must be cheap, because I'm a student. So let's talk about the centerpiece. The 2011 iMac that I bought a marketplace for $25 including a keyboard and mouse. It has quad-core Intel i5, mine came with 12 gigs of DDR3 RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now, small confession, I did swap out the old mechanical hard drive for an $8 SSD, but I honestly don't think it's necessary if your tasks like mine are not that demanding. If you want to see how I did that, check out my very first video. Anyway, sure, it takes a few minutes to boot it up after it's been shut off, but you can just use the time to make a cup of coffee. The screen is 21 and a half inches, with the resolution of 1920 by 1080p. 1080p is of course quite a downgrade from 4K, but it looks surprisingly well. A smaller screen also helps with another thing. It's the perfect size for having just one window open, but two is fine as well. It forces me to focus on one thing, which is really the aim. This iMac only supports up to High Sierra, which was released in 2017. Apple dropped support for it in 2020. Many programs and applications don't support it. Luckily, you can use OpenCore Legacy Patcher to install newer OS's. I have Sonoma installed and it works great. I won't explain exactly how to do this, but in one sentence, download OpenCore, download the OS you want, create a USB installer, reboot and install. As for simplicity, an iMac packages a computer, a monitor and speakers into one. Now you might not be as lucky as I was, getting an iMac for $25, but the idea is just to get something affordable and easily available. Because these old iMacs are officially obsolete, people sell them for cheap. 2. Boundaries There must be a clear boundary between work and leisure. My professor has an office, I don't have that luxury. He goes there to work, and when he leaves, he's off. That is, he has a physical space dedicated to work. So, this was my solution. A cheap piece of plywood, two steel shelf brackets and some wood oil. Don't mind all of the extra holes please. So that's the physical space done. Next I need to set up the digital space, the computer. Again the aim is focus, so I won't install iMessage or any unnecessary apps. I'll make sure background sounds are easily available. You just go into settings, and then control center, and under hearing enable show and menu bar. And if you click here, you can now hear some wonderful background sounds. Finally, I installed Be Focused, a simple app where you can set intervals and work Pomodoro style. For example, 25 minutes of work, followed by a 5 minute break, rinse and repeat. Now I could use my phone, but then I'm only a tab away from Instagram. You can switch between different intervals if you go into settings, even in the free app. 
3. Aesthetics Since I have removed all of the nice-to-haves and potential distractions, I need to make sure the setup appeals to me in another way. It must be aesthetically pleasing, but not distracting. It can't be boring, but also not busy and messy. Think of how you feel differently wearing a suit as opposed to sweatpants. Aesthetics matter. So, here I rely on three elements. First, the keyboard. It's a 20-year-old Apple keyboard. I already have a video on it, so maybe check it out. I like how it looks, and I'm drawn to the design and the multicolor layout, and I even like the feel of the membrane keys. Controversial, I know. Second, my pen. It's a Kaweco... Kaweco? It's a Kaweco fountain pen that a friend gifted me some years ago. Using it is like wearing a suit, if you know what I mean. Last, the iMac itself. Even though it's 14 years old by now, I really do appreciate Apple's timeless design. It fits into my living room. So, that's how I designed my new setup. And I can sum up my design philosophy like this. Multitasking is not an ideal to strive for, but we can only focus on one thing at once. Anyway, I hope you find my considerations useful. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. I'm very interested in your feedback. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye.